Is it finally Javante Williams week? We'll tell you right now on Fantasy Football Today in 5. What's up? Welcome to our Saturday edition of Fantasy Football Today in 5. Adam Acer and Jacob Gibbs of Sportsline. Jacob's dropping the advanced stats. The number one most added wide receiver in CBS Sports Leagues is Elijah Moore. He's up to 94% rostered. Should we be starting him this week, Jacob? Absolutely. You love to see the Elijah Moore breakout finally. Uh, we were really excited on him going into the year. And I think he's shown, you know, his, his underlying data has shown all year what we kind of knew going in, that he's really, really good. Um, it's just kind of taken a while to get an opportunity where he can, you know, really begin to put up production. Um, and we've seen that over the past month, he actually, uh, not counting Stefan Diggs, you know, with the fifth game on Thanksgiving, over the last month, Elijah Moore leads all fantasy receivers in scoring in PPR leagues, which is insane. You know, yeah. catching passes from Joe Flacco and everything. Um, he's been really, really good. And so we've seen this all year. It's just kind of been a slow progression um, into more playing time and increased efficiency as the year has gone on. Um, over the past month, he's averaged 2.9 yards per out run and has been targeted on 27% of his routes, which both are top 10 among wide receivers during that time. Um, and what's particularly exciting about the target per route run rate is that it's come on really deep, um, a really deep route tree. Elijah Moore's um, route tree has not changed at all over the past month. He's just been targeted more often. His average route depth is actually above 10 yards during that time, which is second in the NFL. Um, and on the year, his average route depth is above 10 yards. Only Emmanuel Sanders has a deeper average route depth. And so to, to be running such deep routes, to be running you know such a downfield-oriented route tree and still be drawing a target on 23% of his routes on the year as a rookie is just like really pretty mind-blowing. If you're somebody who really, really digs into the stats and, and loves this stuff as much as I do. This, that's the kind of thing that really only like Justin Jefferson and Calvin Ridley do in terms of running such deep routes and still drawing so many targets. And the reason this is particularly exciting this week is he's facing a Houston Texans defense um, that has not done well when targeted downfield. Um, not that that should come as much of a surprise, um, but they do have the um, league's second highest uh, completion percentage and yards per um, attempt on um, targets that have come 10 or more yards downfield. So really exciting spot for more here. I think everything, all the momentum these bring in, of course, Zach Wilson could throw things off, but I'm really, really excited for him. And I think we're going to continue to see him produce at high level in this matchup. So LaVisca Chenault, hopefully they can manufacture more touches for him in the running game, as Urban Meyer has said. But what are you thinking? Why are you excited about LaVisca Chenault? Yeah, you you hit on there. That's one thing. I think just in general, we're going to we're going to see him kind of pick up the role that Jamal Agnew was playing. And the, a lot of us thought LaVisca was going to play coming into the year. Um, with Jamal Agnew out, we saw Chenault run a lot more routes from the slot last week. Um, his slot rate was up above 50%. It had not been above 35% since week four. They had basically moved him to the perimeter and just given him the exact route tree that DJ Chark was running, which is not well-equipped for, you know, LaVisca Chenault. That's not what he's good at. Um, here's his, his career rates on routes that have developed um, seven or more yards downfield, which is the average that we saw um, in games when he's been, you know, used more in the slot. Um, he has only been targeted on 15% of his routes when running uh, um, routes that develop seven yards downfield, and he's only averaged 1.5 yards per hour run. But on routes that have come seven or fewer yards downfield, he's been targeted on 33% of his routes. Oh. <laughs> That's massive. He's doubled yeah. his rate, and this is his career rates. It's not just this year, so it's a decent sample size. Um, he's averaged over two yards per hour run on those as well. Um, so he's been significantly above the league average on those types of routes, significantly below the league average on deep routes. And now we get him, get him in a spot against an Atlanta team that really keeps everything in front of him and, and funnels um, targets to the short area of the field. Uh, the Falcons have the fifth lowest opponent average depth of target on the year. So really excited for Chanel. I think he should get a few more rushing attempts. Like you mentioned, I think he should get more targets, draw targets at a much higher rate when running shorter routes from the slot. And then on top of that, the matchup sets up well for him, given the type of routes he's going to run. Okay, so I teased it earlier. Is it finally going to be Javante Williams week? I think it might be. I don't want to be giving people too much hopium with all these young guys, but I'm really, really excited for Javante as well. Um, we saw him finally outsnap Melvin Gordon um, in the in the last game before the bye. And I think it makes sense that coming out of the bye, they could get him more involved. And he really couldn't ask for a better spot to start building that momentum than here against the Chargers. The Chargers rank 21st in total defensive DVOA even though they rank eighth against the pass. And that is possible because they have been 
the worst against the run all year. It's not even close. The difference between them and second place in terms of rush defense to DVOA is 157%, which is just wow. absurd. It's like mm-hmm. they're clearly the worst. Um, they're bottom 10 in missed tackle rate and yards after contact per attempt as well, which is really exciting for Javante. Um, among 31 players with at least 100 rushing attempts, um, only six have broken over 30% of their tackle attempts. And only one has broken over 40%. I'm sure you can guess who it is. Uh, we talked about him before the season even started. This is his thing. He's just yeah. one of the best tackle breakers in the NFL already. I mean, he has been this year. He's broken 43% of his tackles, which is just silly. <laughs> for, for reference, Melvin Gordon has broken 22% of his tackles. Um, so I think it's just a really, really exciting spot. We don't know how how the workload is going to break down. But if it does lean more towards Javante, like we saw um, in their last game, then I think, you know, he really could run all over this defense. And so I'm really, really excited for him in the spot. Oh man, I hope so. I'm starting him in two or three leagues. So let's go. Let's make it Javante Williams week. That is Jacob Gibbs. I am Adam Azer. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Have a great weekend, everybody. Good luck in week 12. And we'll talk to you tomorrow morning on fantasy football today in five.